So we got every voter, well, every voter that's Republican. That's why I've got city repub walk. I always ask people, can we, can we please approach the 20th century? Because <laughs> when did the cell come out, right? <laughs> Regroup, drink some, some tea. I want to ask you some of these questions here that are in this Utica trivia. How Utica are you? Oh, okay. Have you seen this? I have not seen it. Question number one. Have you watched Joanne DeRosa and Hannah Park? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Who is Joanne DeRosa for all the people that don't know? He is an Elvis impersonator. <laughs> this is great. Drink coffee at Dandy Donuts. Yes. I drank coffee at the South Utica Dandy Donuts, which used to be across from the dry cleaner that was that circle building on the corner uh, with my father. He used to meet club owners there and get like the pay for his band and stuff in like paper bags. It was, I just remember getting donuts and drinking coffee. There was someone named Frank and Rita that owned a restaurant that Tony Bennett and Frank Sinatra ate at. Oh, Frank and Rita. Oh man. I don't know which restaurant that is. I feel bad I don't know. I feel like it's either like Grimaldi's or... It is Grimaldi's. It is Grimaldi's? Yeah, all right. Now, yeah. The thing is, is Grimaldi's isn't around anymore. So it was Grimaldi's, then it was Castronovo's Grimaldi's, then it was owned by this guy, oh, his name comes to me. My cousin Joe cooked there, Joe Durani, when he was a kid. Uh, that's like where he learned uh, how to make fettuccine Alfredo. I actually have written on a piece of paper the original Grimaldi's fettuccine Alfredo recipe in a cookbook like that I asked him for so I can make it at home. Oh man, even when it was open in the late 2000s before it closed, they still had the piano player every Friday and Saturday night. You'd go to the bar, bachelor parties, like I, place was awesome, awesome. So now, so nowadays, Grimaldi's is gone. But if someone like Tony, or, uh, Tony Bennett or Frank Sinatra were to come Venturas. If, Venturas. But they were, if they were to come to town to perform, where would they perform? Stanley Theater. Mm. There's probably 50 people genuinely out there collecting signatures. And the reality is, that's the key. If every committee person just got one page, we'd all just have to do like 45 minutes worth of work. Um, it's a little bit different this year because everything's a little bit split because of the whole Cordillo situation. But, um, you know, we're doing good. I got like six pages for Citywide. After this is done, we'll probably have to get another party line because that's the new thing everyone does now is they make up their own line every year to pull like a thousand votes off of stuff. Um, which is legal, but you know, they, they changed all these laws a couple years ago to quote, make the system less gameable. And what they did was just create more games and made it even more difficult for normal people to be elected to office, which is awesome. What I'm hearing a lot today in particular is people have been seeing me on the news. They've been watching me work and uh, they're just voting for me regardless. One person literally said, we don't care what you're running for, whatever it is, we're voting for you. So, you know, that's not bad. It's a good feeling today, but who knows what tomorrow will bring. We need, there's like 6,300 Republicans in Utica. So we need 5% of that to get on the ballot for the ballot access for the Republican party. So typically what we'll do is get double so we're looking for somewhere between 650 and 700 signatures before we have to file because ultimately people within your own party, unfortunately, who want to do primaries and whatnot and the opposite party always challenge the petitions and they try to throw your signatures out for everything from, you know, someone wrote drive instead of place or they wrote Fairview instead of Farview or something, um, or sometimes it's literally cold in the pen, you know how like the pen will write in the cold? Mm -hmm. So someone will like write over their name a couple times because the pen wasn't writing and they'll be like, oh, this is forged. 
Like all this like nonsense, it's like completely ridiculous. Constituent calls are up because they know everyone's running. And um, I mean, probably 15 to 20 calls a day, just personally, whether it's to do with the campaign or, uh, you know, constituents regarding the campaign. Oh, uh, the Stanley, We've got the dance competition going on. I am not involved in going to this dance competition. Uh, this is the type of stuff that helps though. There's activity, right? This is real. How many hockey teams are playing this weekend? 30s, We've got a dance competition. We've got tons of people to Stanley right now. This is, uh, this is good because people just doing things in the city keeps the city clean. When I was going door to door in 2019, um, I think it was in the Sunnyside neighborhood. Um, they literally said, we're happy you paved our roads finally, but now everyone's using the road like a racetrack. And uh, now they have problem with speeding. So it's kind of funny that there's all these, the roads is such an absolutely endless, that whole topic is just endless. But the problem is we, there's, there's, it's not just for the cars and the vehicles and the pedestrians. If you don't keep the roads in the proper condition and keep them sealed, okay, you end up letting water infiltrate all of the infrastructure below, which is sewers, water, gas, etc. Um, so, you know, there's, it's, it's not just so we could drive on them. There's a whole infrastructure under the pavement that if you let the roads crumble, there's a lot more crumbling under it that's a, worth a lot more money than the pavement that sits on top of it. Not making deals with people. I refuse to make deals with other candidates, uh, which essentially makes a mockery of our entire like democratic election process because you're just, you know, when people do that, they're staying in elections to just screw other candidates for all the wrong reasons. They might not even be on the right party line and they're just like, whatever, I'm gonna get a job with this other guy, so I'm gonna be a spoiler candidate. And uh, that's, you can go through Utica's history, it, that's all over the place. Because the other candidate had a third party line that you didn't even have access to, they can make a deal with another candidate to stay in, to take votes away from you so that you don't win, but then the other candidate on the other party does win. It's a spoiler candidate. It happens all the time. Sorry, so much of this is just tedious, but that's campaigning. Everyone's like, what are you gonna do? And I think it's more, it's not just the police, it's not like crime, it's public safety. So, I do think a lot of it has to do with drugs and drug use and the fact that we're normalizing that. And I'm not talking about weed, right? I'm talking about heroin, cocaine, fentanyl, meth, you know, it's just like people are normalizing it. Like it's supposed to be okay that you're doing it. So you've got public safety, which is police and fire. You've got all the community groups like United Way, for example, that have reach into the different environments and the different funding sources from the state and county to actually do something about it and help people actually stop using. But then you have codes, okay? You have codes and you have the different facilities within the city to stop things like the Mandeville Street Fire. That was basically a drug den. Okay, there were two people living there, 15 people staying there doing drugs. All right, the firefighters had to literally crawl through piles of needles to clear the building and make sure no one was going to die or perish in that fire, right? So, you know, we need to have as a city an approach where the codes department is effectively monitoring vacant buildings and making sure they're secure so that those don't become drug dens and those don't become places where this type of crime proliferates. I want every single neighborhood in this city to be able to have some form of a park and have some form of a semblance where you can take your kid for a walk, okay? I coach baseball. 
and this is kind of a new phenomenon, but you know, basically around seven, eight years ago, all of a sudden, and that's not when I was coaching baseball, but it was started to become a problem, right? If a ball goes in the bushes, you can't send the kid in the park into the bushes to go get a baseball anymore because there's literally a bunch of hypos and they're gonna get some kind of disease or get pricked by a needle. Right now you're talking to somebody who's like a huge Second Amendment, uh, you know, supporter, uh, but there is a gun problem, right? People talk about raise the age, okay? Um, they basically created a situation where adolescents, if they're found with guns that are not registered, quote, illegal firearms, okay, pistols, if you will, um, they're released. Uh, they are not gonna be tried as an adult. And in order to be tried for anything, they have to have intent to kill. They have to be pointing that weapon at somebody. So what's happened over the past decade or so is gangs now are rounding up adolescents to carry for them because they know they're not gonna get in trouble. So it's, it's commonplace for kids to be walking around with guns at this point. Uh, and, and our state did that to our adolescent population. And the older criminals in the city understand that and know that, and they take advantage of that as well. And that's why they're getting more and more young kids involved in gangs, because they know, guess what? They're gonna get out. So it's just another problem the state's caused by making believe crime isn't real. Kids don't have a place to go. The state wants to put it all at school. There's before school and after school, at school. Guess what? When kids get out of school, they want to leave school. They don't want to stay at school for another three hours. Um, when we were kids, we used to have boys club, girls and boys club, all that type of stuff. Um, we do need more of that. And it shouldn't be tied to, quote, um, housing necessarily. It shouldn't be tied to all of these other things the state's trying to do, like catch-all facilities. We need actual centers where from four o'clock to eight o'clock, there's a program for a kid to go to and fiddle around with the piano, like draw, whatever, read, play video games. I don't care what it is. I really do believe that we're putting too much of our funding towards these quote, housing projects and housing facilities. And we need to just realize that year over year, we're doing that. So year over year, we need to actually put funding towards actually staffing neighborhood centers where people between the ages of like 10 and 18 can go. Otherwise they have nowhere to go. So we end up with crime. You go into our elementary schools, which I did uh, community musicians day the other day, right? And they're running a tight ship. I mean, it was awesome. Um, all the kids were extremely well behaved, extremely attentive. The teaching staff was like on point. Um, after we all did like the classroom stuff where we showed the kids the instruments and like showed them different types of music and asked them questions about what they thought about music and if they played instruments and stuff like that. Um, we did a big assembly where they had all the kids in the gym and we played a concert for them. Prince, the kids were talking, you know, whatever, they're having fun. Principal walks in and raises her hand and every single kid in the auditorium was immediately listening to that principal. Um, so, you know, people harsh on Utica schools all the time. I don't think they really understand um, how great they run the Utica schools. It's, re it's really a great district. We got great music, art, sports programs, AP classes, kids bridge to MV. You know, kids do all kinds of different stuff in the Utica School District that uh, prepares them for actually like having a real life after school. They're conditioned for reality. 